Hello and good morning to everyone. Uh, today, it's the uh, it's Friday, August 16th, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Days just run together sometimes. Welcome everyone, this is the Chai Tea Tai Chi podcast and Dane and Andrew are going to discuss Dane's awesome Vipassana trip. So he just returned from, I think it was 10 day Total med- deep immersion meditation trip. Is that correct, Dane? Yes, uh, a, a trip is kind of a good way to put it. A meditation trip. It's a uh, a ten day course. <laughs> good, good. Ten days, man. So uh, it's called vipassana. That sounds like some kind of Indian tradition. Uh, could you tell me what vipassana is? Yeah, it it does come out of India. The lore is so vipassana is a is a meditation technique. Uh, and it's a specific technique that is typically taught, traditionally taught in, uh, in a, a step-by-step layered approach over 10 days in, in a 10-day course or workshop. Um, and that's 10 full days uh, of, of immersion into this experience in this technique. Um, and the, the experience is, 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 a, is a deep dive, and it's kind of like experiencing what it would be like to join a monastery and, and be a monk or a nun for those 10 days and to live the way you would if you were totally dedicated to this uh, this practice, which is a seated meditation technique. And there's, uh, there's, there's uh, we, we, the, the last show we did, we actually talked about the five modes of meditation, which are, are lying down, sitting down, standing, moving and interacting. And, and seated meditation is one of the most well-known kinds, of course. And so this is a seated meditation technique that does derive originally from India, or I, I think actually more accurately Nepal to, w- today, because that's, that's where Gautama the Buddha was born. But uh, the, the lore is, and the, the story around this technique is that this technique of Vipassana was the technique that was discovered and taught by Prince Siddhartha Gautama, who sat under the Bodhi tree and had the Satori experience and became awakened, became known as the the awakened one, the Buddha. And he discovered this technique that night and has uh, and 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 taught it for the rest of his life. And it has, so the story goes, been passed down through this particular lineage in this pure form. So Mm. Um, this is the the sort of the OG of meditation techniques, uh, according to the 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 story and the lore surrounding it. Sounds like a pretty uh, as much as an authentic technique as you could get these days. Yeah, yeah. I, well, yeah. I when if you if you're if you're talking about uh, authentic and, and original, yeah, it is a it is a legitimately uh, old and. Uh, and, and and respectable lineage with a with a, with a, a great deal of street cred. So um, really researched. A lot of people practice it. For uh, yeah, there's there's, there's many uh, practitioners and many graduates of this course all over the world that are that are taught in exactly the same format. And um, for uh, and and I would definitely say that um, for somebody who uh, wants a uh, wants to go to a kind of a meditation boot camp, like, hey, this meditation thing seems really cool, and I want to, I want to see how far I can go. That I want to do a deep dive and and get a a strong dose. Um, this is absolutely a a great experience, and it's enjoyed by people who are beginner or novice meditators, as well as people who are advanced, experienced meditators, even uh, monks and nuns from other traditions go through this course and gain a lot of benefit. So. Um, Having uh, ha- having gone through it myself, I'd heard about it for a long time, and and I knew a little bit about it. But uh, having and and I, and I was certainly interested, and then when the opportunity came up, and having had the experience, yeah, it is it is a powerful technique, and it is as good as it sounds like it would be. Good. Okay. So uh, it's a it's probably a pretty simple technique for the most part. Could you give a quick brief intro into what you're supposed to do? and how you achieve it well the technique is is not i wouldn't call it simple it's it's taught in 
a and that's why it's one reason that it's taught over 10 days is because it's not it's just a single simple thing it's taught mm -hmm. in in stages in the layered process over 10 days there are uh there are three main parts to it and i and i and i can't kind of describe it um <clears throat> of of course to to really do justice to the technique and learn all the details and learn how to really know if you're doing it right or not the the 10 day course is is what's recommended because that's exactly what it's designed for but um this is a a type of meditation uh that that purifies the mind not by focusing on the contents of the mind by but by focusing on the contents of the body on 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 the on the the experience of the body physical bodily sensation so i'm curious to know if this sounds familiar to you first uh the first part of it is uh while you're sitting you start off focusing on the breath and just noticing the breath coming and going naturally and and then after you do that for a while for a couple of days the first couple of days of the, of the workshop are, are focusing on this part of the technique and then and then you begin uh, when you when you you use that to kind of develop your sensitivity and specifically the sensitivity to your bodily sensations. And then when you when you've built that up, you start to systematically feel your body from the inside. So uh, so, for example, if you were to just close your eyes right now and ask yourself if you have a right knee. Can you feel that your right knee is there? Can you feel that you have it? That's that's the kind of uh, feeling your body from the inside, putting putting your awareness into the physical bodily sensations, and then uh, and uh, and and it might first be uh, gross sensations, like if if your if your knee is pressed up against something, you feel something touching it, or if you, or you feel your clothes over it. But uh, but by moving by focusing your awareness on the gross sensations, the gross physical sensations, you start to develop the more subtle sensations. And then you can just kind of feel your right knee from the inside, just feel that you have it, feel that it's alive. Mm -hmm. And, and that sensitivity is developed over the next couple of days. And, and, and what, and the way it's done is by scanning your body mm -hmm. from the inside, kind of like a cat scan, scanning your body part by part, moving your awareness through your body, through the face, through the head, through the arms, the torso, the legs, and feeling your whole body from the inside. Does does this sound familiar at all? It sounds pretty familiar. Uh, it sounds like the same discovery process that Qigong. It's it it's quite it's quite uncanny actually. And and when I was when I was undergoing this instruction process, I was like, oh wow. So okay, you you. Uh, I mean, of course, you, it's seated in a pretty dark room and and mostly silent uh, in in the workshop the there are there are group sittings where everybody sits together um but the uh you uh you you so you have your eyes closed because you're sitting and you start to feel your breath and then you start to scan your body from the inside with your awareness very much like you would do in the practice of tai chi or qigong so that was uh an interesting parallel I noticed right away, and then and then the main part of uh, the uh, of, of the technique is on that, and uh, and essentially first you you kind of scan around inside your body with your awareness part by part like a spotlight that moves around and scans different parts of your body, and not to change anything, but just to feel and notice the sensations that are there, and and when you as you open up and can feel more parts of your body and can do that more readily, then eventually you, you start scanning your body from top to bottom in a single breath, kind of like a, a, a CT scan, just going near, 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 near from the inside with each breath. So as you exhale, you scan your whole body top to bottom. As you inhale, you scan your whole body bottom to top. With yeah, this. You're practicing so much that it just becomes instantaneous. It's well, it's not instantaneous, but it's it's in the natural space of a breath. It's very quick, and 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 as you uh, you you do that with the 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 sensitivity and awareness that you have developed and and built up. So that's the that's kind of the 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 bare bones of the technique, the meat and potatoes, I suppose. And um, of course, there's a, there's a lot of for this 
to do this particular technique according to the way it's taught in this particular lineage, uh, there's a lot of details, and that's what the 10 day course is for. Um, cool. But uh, but that's that's essentially what the technique is. You become more and more aware of your breath, more and more aware of your body, and essentially the 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 more you do that, the mind just kind of purifies itself. Yeah, I got and, you. And and because that's the technique originally body, discovered. You really feel your heartbeat. You feel your breath. You feel how your posture is sitting, you feel your back is out of alignment because you start to get back aches, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just constantly fidgeting and fixing everything until you just sit calmly for hours and hours and don't move. It's pretty hard. Yeah, my back yeah. always gets cramps from, uh, if you don't have really good support on your, uh, on your tailbone, your back starts to bother you because you're using your muscles to support yourself if you're in a bad position. So. Well, that's one of the things I love about sitting meditation is it teaches you how to be completely stacked and relax all your muscles. <laughs> yes, like, like, like other things we do and take for granted, it actually takes a little bit of concentrated intelligence to learn how to sit properly. And, and that's certainly something that, that uh, dedicated seated meditation practice will teach you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. That's awesome, Dane. That's great. Um, so what would you say uh, the benefits of Vipassana are? What, what would your teacher tell you? <laughs> well, uh, so, so according to the teaching of the Buddha, this actually is the technique that is the, the, the way to bring oneself out of suffering and misery. The, the, the Four Noble Truths, uh, life is suffering uh, is one of them. And also there is a way out of suffering and the way out of suffering is to practice this technique or, or something very much like it. The, um, the, 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 the workshops as they're taught now by this, this large, uh, worldwide organization, uh, was, was organized by a single teacher by the name of Gwenka. And, um, and the, he, he, he designed this, this particular format that, that the courses, uh, taught by this organization, all over the world follow, and his in, his uh, recorded instructions are actually the ones that are given um, for for instructing in the meditation, as as well as uh, the the courses consist of of instructions in meditation, as well as a series of discourses um, each evening. And one of one of the things that he he says in uh, in 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 these discourses that, that I I loved and, and I could confirm from my own experience uh, was that he said any meditation technique, it doesn't matter if you call it Vipassana or not, but any meditation technique that focuses on feeling the physical sensations of the body and the awareness of the breath while maintaining equanimity, as in not reacting, not, re not reacting automatically, breaking the habit patterns of the mind to crave pleasure and avoid dis and avoid pain or discomfort is is an is a liberation practice it it, it whether it's it's called this exactly this way the two elements of feeling the sensations of the body and maintaining an equanimous mind observing them objectively uh are will will we'll take you on this path to the, the phenomenon of of enlightenment or uh, or or liberation and and I can attest to that from my own experience actually because I when I when I first began practicing internal martial arts I I had no concept of of any kind of spiritual dimension of reality whatsoever I wasn't seeking enlightenment I didn't even necessarily believe in such a thing. But I noticed that within about six months of practicing, of beginning to practice internal martial arts, of noticing my breath, observing my breath, feeling the, my body from the inside, moving around and feeling what was going on in my body while practicing detachment from thought. There was a moment where I had a massive awakening experience 
that just seemed to come out of nowhere. I wasn't seeking it. I wasn't striving for it. It just kind of fell out of the sky and hit me on the head. And I recognize it as the Satori experience that is written about in, in the, the Buddhist literature. And the first thought that went through my head was, wow, that's what that is. <laughs> and it was just an immediate recognition. And, and this was the, the first and, and, and the largest spiritual awakening of my life that was followed by a three-month peak state where basically my entire body, mind, energy system was operating at peak performance. And then that faded after a while, but the residual awareness remains. So I, I know from experience, and th this is maybe something uh, we could, we could uh, go into more detail about on a, on a different show because it's, it's a deep topic. But I know from experience that, yeah, doing these kind of practices, even if you don't believe in it, <laughs> uh, just paying attention to what's going on inside with the body and the breath can lead to massive shifts and transformations in the way that you experience and, and perceive reality. Wow. All right. That's a, that's a lot to expect from this practice. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you know, you, you can never promise it, like when that sort of thing will happen or for who it's, it's really a matter of, Are you uh, ready? of where you are in life and, and a whole lot of things, but it, it certainly uh, does lead in that direction. And as, as far as, the, the benefits of this practice, that's kind of the, the ultimate uh, benefit that one can hope for, the ultimate like, reason for there, there being a practice like Vipassana. But um, there are, there, there are uh, lots of the, the more what you might consider mundane benefits. For uh, example, the fact that it's taught in a 10-day course where essentially you go into seclusion. This is um, for... Uh, for for the deep plug and and the discipline, it's it's just hugely beneficial because um, this the course happens in in a certain area with certain boundaries that you are, are not allowed to leave during the time of the course, and there are um, strict rules that are observed, not in like a disciplinary kind of way, but just in an explaining that we found that this is these uh, these rules make for the best environment to get the maximum benefits from meditation. So there's no communication yeah. of any kind yeah. happens. It, specifically, no reading, no writing, no speaking, uh, no, no, no eye contact or gestures with your fellow meditators. And, and I was there, like, for example, the group of about 20 men, and we occupied the same space, but we don't interact. Um, and uh, and the only uh, essentially you can you can talk to management if you if you have an issue and there's a certain time each day when you can talk to the teacher and ask questions. But other than that, you're just with yourself in your own head. There's um, uh, no no intoxicants, no alcohol, no caffeine, no nicotine, uh, no intoxicants of any kind. You eat the food they give you, which is simple vegetarian food. There's um, and there's a, a simple lunch, a simple breakfast, and do what? Uh, I, were, I really wanted to ask if they encourage fasting. No, you're, you're not supposed to fast while you're doing the course. Fast. Okay. Um, and I was kind of curious about uh, why not, but I'm, I'm sure there's reasons why. There's reasons for everything about the way it's designed when, uh, when, you, uh, when, you, when you look into it. Um, and, and also separation. There's no physical contact. You don't touch anybody ever and there's separation between the genders so males and females are in separate areas where they have no direct physical interaction um and uh and and the the schedule there's the and the dinner is very light like at the most you could have tea for dinner and some fruit and like that's the most if if you that's for if you go to the course for the first time if you are a returning student you're not supposed to eat anything after oh. after twelve uh, after twelve noon. So um, those are those are some of the disciplines that are observed, and also uh, with with regard to the meditation itself, there um, the 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 wake up bell is at four a.m. and the first meditation period starts at four thirty and goes from four thirty to six thirty at breakfast, and then there's a break for breakfast, and uh, and then there's there, there are there are kind of open meditation times when you're able to meditate in the meditation hall or in your own quarters, and it's it's not um, 
uh, it's, it's kind of do as much as you can. And then there are specific periods like three, uh, three to uh, six hours a day that are group meditation uh, times where everyone is expected to be at the hall. But if, if you, you know, in total, it's, it's 10 to 12 scheduled hours a day of meditating and with breaks where there still isn't anything to do to take your mind off the work you're doing, you're supposed to maintain your consciousness of, of breathing and sensation as much as possible. So the fact that it's, it's a deep dive immersive experience like that, um, it's, is really strong and powerful for building self-discipline. And I, uh, and, and a primary thing I've noticed since coming back is just like my, my, my sense of self-discipline and my desire to have self-discipline is stronger. I, I noticed times when I, I would have cut myself a little slack or a little leeway with, mm-hmm. you know, doing something that I said, told myself I wasn't going to do or, 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 or staying in bed a little bit longer or whatever. I, I just, I snap right out of it because, because I really came to enjoy the, the, that feeling of, of discipline and, and becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable gave me um, uh, an even stronger taste for, for infusing yeah. discipline into my life. And then also the, the unplugging, just like unplugging from all inputs. And of course, y- y- you're, you're going to inevitably spend some time just sitting with your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> and well, and that's, that's, that's what the whole retreat is. A lot of well, that. So well, well, I mean, no, that's, that's, that's not the main activity. Sitting with your, sitting and thinking is not the main activity. You're supposed to be sitting and not thinking. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be just focusing on breath and sensation, but, uh, and certainly in breaks and, and sometimes, you know, even during meditation periods too, this is part of the practice is, is getting the mind to wander less and less. But, uh, but even, even the the time that, that you do spend, just sitting with your thoughts, that's valuable time, just processing the backlog and, yeah, and kind of I developing a sense of quietude. When you weren't able to journal or write down anything that you're going, that you're going through, that must've been tough to even hold on to those. Oh, I really want to remember this. Cause this is a really interesting thing happening to me. And then three days later, like, I don't remember anything that happened. That's gone. That's like white. <laughs> Cause all I was thinking about was breath posture, relax, breath, posture, relax. Well, it, it gets, it gets processed. Stuff comes up and gets processed. And, uh, there, there are, um, there, you know, there are things, of, uh, meditation, uh, epiphanies, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and actually not, not being able to write them down is part of the discipline mm-hmm. because that's, that's meant to like the brain wants to go uh, you know, build, build castles in the sky. And, and the training is to bring it back to yeah. breath and sensation. I, uh, and it's because that you have to rebuild them anytime you want to access them. It's the, the, it's about retraining the habit patterns of the mind is primarily at the fundamental level, which are mm-hmm. craving or aversion. Something you don't like happens. You, you stiffen up and you tense up and you resist it. Something that you, like happens and you you tense up and you cling to it and you crave it so um the uh so, some of the, some of the mind stuff that comes up is you might start worrying uh of, you know negative you might have negative thoughts about the past or the future feeling guilty about something happened in the past or worrying about something that happened in the future that's that's uh, mind stuff that you're supposed to just uh, observe, objectively disassociate from and, and let it pass and focus on the body. But likewise, there can be positive, the mind can wander in positive directions. You can go into to pleasant memories of the past or, or into fantasies of the future. And it's, it's just as, it, it's equally, the, the positive is just as much responsible, the, the clinging and the craving is just as much responsible for creating misery and suffering as the uh, that resistance and the aversion, because mm-hmm. when you when you cling and crave, you're you're happily anticipating something, maybe not happily anticipating something, maybe you're impatient. And when it's there, you're enjoying it. But part of your mind is diverted from enjoying it, worrying about when it won't be there. And then when it's gone, you're you're in misery because you don't have it. 
Yes, yes. As soon as you have a memory, you're back in some suffering that something you're longing for. When so it's living, when, I have a heartbeat. I got my breath. I'm happy. Everything is right here. Right. When you when you get when you get away from the present moment in the past or the future, whether it's it's uh, negative or positive, you're you're still uh, coming away from the focus of the of the of the present moment, and it's and and it's equally responsible for for causing suffering. So. Um, mm -hmm. The it's if you if you think about going on a on a fast like a fast kind of provides time for the 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 body to process the backlog and 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 cleanse itself and this is a, in a way a mental fast that provides an opportunity for a lot of mental digestion and there are there are things that people do for a kind of kind of a, a deep reset experience like things like holotropic breath work or uh or or working with plant medicines that are that happen sort of quickly and, and forcefully and suddenly and of course uh, a vipassana workshop is just like go into uh isolation for 10 days and just that stuff will come up whatever you know whatever is there if you don't, if you, if you're not uh, distracting yourself, if you're not, um, if 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 you're not self-soothing by talking about it or writing about it, then you have to sit with it, and you 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 sit with it all day long, and it gets processed, it gets digested, and and it and it gets you 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 go through internal shifts until you come to a place of, of sort of equilibrium and, and harmony with yourself. You, you know, there's no one to sit with except yourself. And, and so then what do you do? So the, 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 just like the very practical benefits are going to that experience where you're developing the discipline of, of, of following the schedule of following the rules of sitting longer <laughs> than, than you want to sit in a single position and also just the isolation and, and, and being with yourself and, and sitting in with and confronting whatever comes up, whatever arises, if it's negative emotions and you learn how to, how to transform and allow those and, and find the, the positivity that's underneath. Oh, that's very beautiful. That's pretty cool, man. That's great. Yeah. I'm really interested in trying one out when I have a chance. So when my opportunity comes up, I, uh, I hope to join. So uh, through all the practice you've done in your life, you've been doing Tai Chi, Qigong for many, many years. So how do you think Vipassana aligns with those kind of teachings? Well, for me, for me, there's a lot of resonance, but uh, there, there, there definitely are some unique benefits that I, that I got from, this practice in particular um as as i was saying there, there's actually a lot of parallels between vipassana and qigong um but but it was and and having having a, a background in qigong actually helped definitely helped uh with with getting um the va extracting value from this course but um there were there were definite things i gained like um uh like just i mean the discipline environment was one thing i mentioned but also um, I, I noticed I, I was able to actually increase the, the, the sensitivity, my, my, my sensitivity for feeling my body, like by, by just sitting down and just focusing on this for hours at a time. Uh, for example, I, when I would, uh, scan my, my face and my head at first, I could just kind of feel my whole head and then I could feel smaller, smaller parts of my face. And, and at first, I had a hard time. I couldn't feel my ears, and oh. and after just practicing and 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 working with it after a while, I, I could not just feel my ears. I could feel individual parts of my ears. I could feel the upper edge. I could feel the earlobe. I could feel that uh, that point uh, in 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 the middle in the front, the the the, the little <laughs> card cartilage right here. Um, and That's at first, an interesting, really interesting. Point. Yeah, I, I can, I can, and, and I developed it where like any, any point on my body, like the size of a fingertip, I can feel that specific point on my body. And, and another big blind area was my toes, um, mm. especially sitting, uh, sitting in Zazen, like I was where he's like the whole legs get 
I uh, to sleep, I imagine. Well, no, actually, that's that's something that's something I avoid. It's something you should avoid because that indicates you're cutting off nerve flow. Um, I would I would sit for an hour and uh, um, in in zazen on a cushion, and my legs didn't go to sleep. They were they were very sore when I got up. Like they would hurt a lot. My knees and ankles would hurt a lot from the pressure, but I wasn't putting anything to sleep. And that's actually something that is 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 a is a good thing to take in mind with sitting meditation practice you don't want to be cutting off nerve flow yeah and because that will damage the tissue um i i sorry i i I, had to work through the pain uh initially with the knees and the ankles just sitting in place for a period well there's a uh there's a certain adaptation process um a physical adaptation process uh in, in my case, it's like just the pressure on the, on the joints and on the seat. And that's something that the body does adapt to. The body adapts to pressure over time. And, um, and I, uh, I, I, I experienced a little bit of that. Um, it, it was definitely easier and more possible for me to sit for one hour without moving by the end of the course than it, than it was at the beginning. And it actually seemed by the end of the course, even by like halfway through the course, an hour didn't seem that long. It's like, oh, let's go bust out a quick hour sitting still. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty short. No problem. It came, it came to seem. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, one of the good things about being away is you have time. There's no appointments. There's no, I'm doing this today. Oh, I got to pay this bill. You're, you're cut off. This is all you're doing. So yeah. it's, that's the value of the immersive experience and the, and the external communication fast. I love um, the idea. Is, yeah. You develop the idea of single mindedness that there is nothing but this practice and yeah. everything that you're doing is to support this practice, not avoid the practice, not go do something else to distract myself. Yeah. Yeah. The, the single mindedness is a, is a very powerful uh, powerful thing to have the opportunity to develop. But uh, the, the thing I was saying about my feet is at first, I, like, I couldn't feel my toes at all. Like my toes were a blind area, but after working with it, I was able to begin to f- actually feel each of my toes individually, even when I was sitting on top of my feet. Um, wow. so, uh, so, so even, even having been practicing Qigong for quite some time, I, I, I found that I was able to go deeper um, with, with my own body sensitivity. And it, certainly if, if you um, are a beginner starting from scratch, this would be a very powerful way to develop body sensitivity and, and single mindedness. And um, to, to have a, a technique that you could practice uh, ongoing, because that's, that's the whole point is to you go to the workshop to learn the technique and then you can incorporate it as part of your life. Um, okay when it the and and it would be accurate as as we talked about in the episode on the five modes of meditation it's perfectly accurate to say vipassana is a form of qigong and qigong is a form of vipassana but um the 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 this the same principles apply in qigong they can be applied in qigong of course there's a lot more in Qigong, there's a lot more going on, especially if you're standing up and moving around. It's not just single focus on this one thing. Uh, and there's there's a saying that is uh, is, is kind of obvious. You you get better at what you practice. If you if you want to get better at sitting still for a long time without moving, practice that. that if you want to if you want to get better at at backflips and handstands practice that and the the closest correlate in qigong would be stationary qigong postures where you take on a posture that's that's intentionally challenging and you develop the ability to hold it there with equanimity just developing relaxation and stability and and become comfortable with the uncomfortable over time and and doing that you're also developing the strength of the body along with the strength of the mind and as we as we also talked about in that episode, I think the um, if I if I had to choose, like if I if I was forced to choose, and I can I can e- either only exercise or I can only do seated meditation. 
for me, I would choose to do exercise because my my body just got to move. I can't give up movement. Ideally, of course, they'll be integrated. You can do both. It's it's not the exclusion of one or the other. Yeah. But we do only have so much time in the day. We have to choose and, and prioritize. And there's there is kind of a uh, a, a reputation. We even have the term Buddha belly. That you know, if you've noticed, people who are who become very advanced in sitting meditation, like like pretty much all Buddhist monks, uh, apart from the Shaolin monks, of course, uh, you'll notice that you know they, they they may be very developed in in their uh, spiritual uh, spiritual state, spiritual awareness, but they're not in very good physical shape. Yeah, yeah. and um, and I and I, I I I don't consider that to be a worthy sacrifice to to like single mindedly dedicate oneself to this practice and nothing else to the exclusion of all else where you uh where you're not in physical shape so if i was going to be a monk obviously i would be a shaolin monk because they demonstrate that you can be a highly advanced meditator and also highly physically developed well i would be a wudong monk and i would kill you in the night so (laughs) (laughs) i have one more uh quick question about uh this whole thing uh, did you feel like you got to a second moment of Satori? Did you feel that you were either on edge or that you found that moment for a brief period during this whole trip? I didn't have a, a, a discontinuous opening of that form. Since that first experience, there have been a few periods of my life where the portal has come open to a significant degree, never as wide or for as long, but there have been glimpses kind of triggered by certain circumstances. My experience in, in this was more like it, it was, it was, it was, it was a slow progression that was, was subtle uh, over time. Um, but I, I noticed my emotional state kind of shifting gradually over the course of days. And I would notice that like I, the way that I felt on the first day when I got there and compared to the way I felt uh, the third or the fourth day and the, the kinds of things, my d- d- things, my mind distractions, my mind was generating like there were, uh, you know, there were um, certain kind of previous experiences that were getting processed and I'd noticed that my mind would move on from those and start bringing up other things. And, um, what I did experience was a, uh, uh, starting, starting around the middle, probably around day five or six, I just started experiencing a, a bubbling sense of joy and, and optimism and, mm. and, and a welling up of, of positive emotions. And there were also negative emotions in there as well. There were a lot of negative emotions, but what I felt was, was kind of like this kind of moving through and, and, and processing and uh, clearing just kind of like, like a psychic spring cleaning, just, just uh, cleaning, cleaning all the clutter out and, um, and, and, and clearing the backlog. And, and what, when, when the, the, the stressful kind of thoughts bubbled up to the surface and evaporated and there was more thoughts of more, more senses of, of uh, po- positive thoughts and peace and harmony and that sort of thing. Mm. Wow. Sounds as like well as, as Definitely. well as something, something else that, uh, that, that I noticed was my, the, the, the my dreams uh, becoming oh. very vivid and, and more lucid. And, yes. and I noticed that, uh, uh a market increase in, in dream activity and every single night that I was there actually it's like be, even before I started going there when I, like I, I, I applied pretty short notice just a couple of days in advance and got accepted. And then as soon as I found out I was going, my dreams, I started every night then I would dream that I was already at the workshop and I would oh, wake yeah. up feeling like I'd, I'd been at the workshop. And then when I was at the workshop every single night, I dreamed very intensely, very intense, vivid, wild dreams, and and one of them was 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 at least partially lucid, uh, 
and I, I know I was kind of getting kind of the barrier between the dream consciousness and, and external consciousness was, was kind of becoming thin. And mm -hmm. there was one dream incident that was, that was so great where, where I actually exercised my power, which was, I was riding in a, a car with some people, uh, maybe a caravan and, and, and there was a, a toll booth of, of some kind. And, uh, and it turned out, and I, I was, I was unprepared. I hadn't uh, been expecting any such thing, but it turned out there was a, a fee to continue of $947. There's a $947 toll. And my first reaction was, oh no, I don't have that. I can't go on. But then I thought, wait, I'm dreaming. I can have it if I want. So I reached into my pocket and pulled out a thousand dollar bill and <laughs> continued on the trip. Nice. And I actually consciously shifted that part of the dream because I knew that I could. That's awesome. Well, that's one of the things I've noticed from deep meditation as well. Like the, that night, I have very, very vivid dreams. I've been having three to four vivid dreams a night lately. So sometimes I wake up from the dream and I'm like, I need to write this down. <laughs> so I just get in the bathroom, turn on the light and sit down and do some journaling before I pass back out and have another dream or two. So. I just had some last night. So that's awesome, Dane. Very good trip. Very glad to hear your results. So how would uh, someone like me be able to sign up for this? How did you find it? The organization that hosts these workshops is dhamma.org, D-H-A-M-M-A.org. And I'll put that link in the comments on this video. Um, but, they, that, but that one website is their portal for their uh their centers and their workshops all over the world. They're all over the country as, as well as uh, overseas. And um, the way it works is you, you apply uh, and, and the more in advance, the better. If there's uh, there are certain, um, uh, you know, you fill out an application and, uh, and if there's space, you're accepted. It's a first come first serve basis. There is no cost for attending. Um, the, they're just spreading meditation <laughs> yeah well it's i mean you know it's, it's hard you know, people have a hard enough time just finding 10 days to you know devote to this and that's the biggest obstacle um but the the way that the 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 practice is supported is um they they accept donations only from people who have already attended the course yeah. so if you attend the course, it's because of the, it's completely paid for. Your food, lodging, instruction, everything is paid for by the generosity of people who came before you. And then after you've, you've already received that experience, then you are allowed to contribute so that others may also get the benefits of that experience. And that's how their revenue model works. So if, um, if, uh, if there's no cost to attend in that sense, if one were to go expecting to uh, not contribute anything after the experience was over, that wouldn't be the, 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 the appropriate way to approach it in order to get the maximum benefits. But, um, but what you give is, is up to you based on your means and your volition. What's, what are you able to give and how valuable is it to you that other people are able to receive these teachings. So um, the it's uh, like religious charity, you know, like, Oh, I had a great experience. So I donate to my church to share the experience with other people. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's very much along those lines. Of course, it's, it's described as being non-sectarian as a, it's, it's not a religion. It's just a, a, a technique for purifying the mind that anybody can do in practice. You don't have to believe anything or, or convert anything. Um, yeah. But uh, but of course it, it is associated with uh, with the, the Buddhist uh, worldview. Got it. So they do a little bit of preaching about the classical Buddhist theory and idea. Well, no, actually, the 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 entire focus of the course is on the technique. This is the technique. This is how you do it. The there is some theory explained in the discourses, but it's. It's just enough to like kind of just like what it's helpful to know in order to be able to practice a technique most effectively. It's like if you're teaching a Tai Chi class, um, 
it might be helpful occasionally to to quote from the Tao Te Ching or the Tai Chi classics in order to understand something you're doing. But the focus here is on practice. Okay. And and you, you don't have to become a classic scholar in, in order to do that. In fact, it would be that that would be that's like intellectual games and pursuits, which is not the what the technique and the practice itself is. All right. Well, that's amazing. Thanks so much for that story, Dane. That was a really great uh, history of your short little trip. And uh, I'm really interested in learning about it. Thanks for sharing the website so that we can all get a chance to go try it out. I mean, free for, it's just two weeks of free vacation, basically. <laughs> just got to get there. So that's pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, so is there anything else you want to say about uh, maybe how we can, people can find you and how they can learn from your experience? Yeah, of course we've uh, we've been talking about vipassana and and I, uh, I I highly recommend that as as an experience if somebody wants to learn about this and I would say that if if you already practice qigong vipassana would definitely be good for your qigong if you already practice vipassana or some other form of sita meditation definitely qigong will be good for your meditation and uh, so for those who are, are interested in learning about the Vipassana Sidama.org, for those who are interested in learning about Qigong and Tai Chi, see Chai Chi Tai Chi.org. That's where we have all of our resources centrally located, including our online learning community that has hours of detailed instructional video footage. You can join and learn from anywhere. Um, also, if you are, uh, uh, if you if you want a an introduction to the qigong that we do, um, our video series "90 Days of Qigong" is designed to get you started, develop a daily practice, and get addicted to it just by learning, just by watching and follow following along for 15 to 20 minutes a day. And right. if you are lucky enough to live in San Diego, then uh, also through chai chi, tai chi org, you can find us on Meetup. We have our regular open, regular Saturday morning free and open to the public classes. We have a private training group you can join and teach private lessons and workshops as well. So um, all of that stuff you'll find on our website. And if you if you have been thinking about doing this stuff for a while now's a great time to get started yeah now is the best time all right dane thanks so much for joining us today really great talking to you and welcome back yeah awesome thanks great to have an opportunity to talk about this wonderful experience so i um, am glad to be able to share good good all right man <laughs> all, all right peace out, guys <laughs> signing off <laughs>